here it is, hardcover. Really good pictures. Why, it's practically a stroke book for your coffee table. And it's a perfect title because I do have a bad reputation. Somebody's always talking about me, Lord. That's all right. All right. That's all right. That's all right. Human beings are herd animals. Human beings are pack animals. Human beings don't like outsiders. They only like outsiders when they're dead. Look what being an outsider did for Jesus. By the way, if anyone here is in marketing or advertising, Kill yourself. My old friend Bill Hicks. That's insane! I would never go and introduce myself. Come so on now, so this is my house. What? I don't know where he gets this language from. Adam and Ad, come on, you're starving me. I'm losing weight sitting here. Where's the fossil? We're going to um, start out with La Miseria. It's my uh, play inside of a performance piece about growing up Italian as a girl in a working class immigrant family. And uh, one person who really stuck up and understood the work at that time was the great thinker, novelist, Sarah Shulman, and she wrote the intro. The best way to begin an homage to a goddess is with an academic essay. <laughs> so I will just read a few excerpts. Penny Arcade was the person who brought performance art to realism. What Penny did was take the confrontational high energy style of performance and bring urban realism to its package. Since she had come from Warhol, the original flat affected stylist, I'm guessing that the glib thing of the next generation did not strike her as exciting. She used performance art to enable truth telling about the individual in a social context of American naturalism without the phony kitchen sink pretense of recreating reality. What also differentiated her as an artist was her background. Very few performance artists were Italian American. Only some were from working class or poor backgrounds and I would guess that fewer than half were from cities. I've always felt and wrote at the time that these were the reasons her sold out shows were functionally ignored by the critics and producers who could and should have made her a public icon instead of the underground goddess we know and love today. Thank you, Penny. We hope to the stage now, Jennifer Bell, who has played the young Penny in all my work. And she's a great novelist and if you never read her books, you should go out and buy them because she is fucking funny. Jennifer Bell. Thank you, Penny. Penny says that when she's 80 and I'm 60, I'll still play the young Penny. So I take great comfort in that. I'm the first one in my family born in America. My family emigrated here from southern Italy, from Lucania. That province is in the south of Italy, between Naples and Bari. It's high in the mountains, surrounded by gorges. The people there live lives of sorrow, committed to misery, in the presence of death. <laughs> You've heard the concept that life sucks and then you die? Well, they invented it. <laughs> Their life hasn't changed since 3,000 years before Christ. Actually, they're not really Catholics or even Christians. They just use Christianity to hang all their pagan beliefs on. Between the age of one and six, I thought that Jesus, Mary, and the saints were just relatives who hadn't left the old country yet. I mean, nobody ever told me that they were holy or that they were God. I would just come in and my grandmother would say, Bacha Jesu, which means kiss Jesus. Between the age of one and six, no one ever spoke to me except to give me a direct order. Eat this, lie down, get up, 
Wash, go out, come in, come in, come in. Nobody ever discussed anything with me. Nobody ever had a conversation with me. No one ever asked me what I thought about anything. Nobody ever asked me how I felt about anything. I know it seems isolated, but it really left a lot of room for my imagination. I'm very proud to have the great Judith Molina of the Living Theater here. Mario plays my brother in La Miseria. What, we're gonna have a fight about a sitcom? No, no. We're not gonna have a fucking fight about a sitcom. We're gonna have a fucking fight about your bullshit. Why don't you take your bullshit back to New York? You know something? You're living in a fucking fantasy world. You know that? So you're what, an artist? You wanna be an artist? You think you're an artist? Shut up. You shut up. Oh, she thinks she's an artist. Big shot. You wanna write? You're a writer? Uh, well, what did she say? <laughs> Let me tell you something. Let me clue you into something. Art, so, is for rich people. And you're not one of them, huh? You know that? Besides that, nobody wants to fucking hear from you. Nobody. So just shut your fucking mouth. Well, what did she say? What did she say? Thank you. La Miseria is a very complex show, and in it there's a gay priest, and Yolanda is now in confession. Anything else? Yes. Sometimes I hate. Go on. My son, Richie, called Jesus a... He called Jesus a big fag, and he said Jesus ran around with 12 men for a reason. Oh. And he said, he said that Mary Magdalene was a, a, a fag hag. Father, Father, what's a fag hag? Go in peace, my child. God, is it true? that Richie has AIDS? Is it my fault he's sick? He says it's my fault, because he's a homosexual. I said, you're not a homosexual, you're Italian. <laughs> Italians don't make homosexuals. We don't believe in that. That's a big sin. He said, it's my fault, my fault because I put him in a dress when he was two. <laughs> was that so bad? <laughs> was that a sin? Is it my fault he has AIDS? Is it my fault he's sick? If he dies, will he go straight to hell? And will it be my fault? Time. You can bring your books up here for me to sign them, but just wait a couple of minutes because I want to change my outfit.